Hey everybody, I got a quick video on how to build a simple and modern bed frame. Um, I'm recovering from COVID currently and I uh, was scrubbing through a bunch of my old videos and came across this video that I hadn't published. Um, so I hope you like it and enjoy. The first part of this build is um, getting my lumber that I'm using to a rough dimension. I have these rough sawn uh, pieces that I'm then cutting to an approximate width. They are oversized for finishing the dimensions. And then once I have finished ripping all of these boards to close to the dimensions that I need, I'm going to plane them down to the thicknesses and then square up all the edges. <clears throat> this is a simple jig that I like to use quite often. It's just a squared piece of plywood with a groove cut into it every couple feet to allow me to use these micro jig clamps and all it does is allow me to use a straight edge as a reference to um, add a nice square and straight cut on any piece that I can clamp onto this little sled. After I use my sled I have a straight and square reference edge so then I can take it off of the sled and cut it to my exact finished dimensions on the other side without using the sled. After I finished planing them all to the finished dimensions and squaring the edges I then took all the pieces and put a 45 degree cut on both ends and cut them to the finished dimension or finished length for all the pieces that I need. For the beginning of the assembly, I'm assembling the two side rails first. And this is the side and the bottom. And in the later steps, you'll see that this bottom is what actually supports the cross members that the mattress will sit on. So there are quite a few different ways to build a uh, bed frame, but this one is gonna be completely glued together. This one isn't going to disassemble with hardware. It's only a twin frame, so and I know the space that it's going in. I know that it's not going to be a difficult location to put it in to the house in one piece. If this was anything bigger than a twin bed, I would absolutely make it come apart and then assemble it in the bedroom. But a twin bed is not hard at all to fit through any standard doorway or up a set of stairs. So this is all going to be glued together to simplify the design of it and it's very hard also to get this clean modern aesthetic with like no extra lines without some type of intricate hardware to close these miters up because typically you have a headboard and the footboard and it locks into it and it overlaps and then you can lock the hardware in like this click it in slide it with this, there's really no room for adjustment. So easiest way is to glue it all together. And I'm using biscuits just to help line everything up. I'm not necessarily using it to make it structurally sound or anything. It does help, I suppose, but not with this particular build. Here's a little trick that I use for stubborn miters. They do make special um, clamshell clamps that are for closing up miters and you can tap it in and it's like a little 
it's like an oversized staple, but it'll help hold the miter together. This doesn't work on every situation. This is gonna get painted so I can putty these little tiny holes. But if you ever have a situation like this, where you have a miter that you can't close up very well, I like to use just a regular pony clamp. This has a lot of force here. Put two nails far enough apart so that it just catches on the jaws and just put a pony clamp on it just like that. And that'll help hold that miter closed nice and tight. Moving on to what is always the most fun part of any build is paint and prep. Well, prep. Lots of lots of sanding. So much sanding. I am mixing this paint at roughly a 10 to 1 ratio. And with different paints, you have to kind of just experiment to see what give, gets you the best results with your particular paint sprayer. But with this, I am mixing roughly 500 milliliters of paint with roughly 50 milliliters of water for a 10 to one ratio. So I'm using the Zinzer 123 primer, which has, which is, as far as latex paints go, it's kind of thin already. So I'm not really watering this down too much. Um, it does smooth itself out very well when you put it on thin. So what I'm doing is I'm filling this up first to 500 milliliters. And then mixing with fresh water I got over here, roughly 50 milliliters of water. The process to applying the first thin layer of primer is pretty simple. First, you wanna make sure that the air is not dusty. I, the day that I always do paint, I never do any other woodworking in the shop to avoid any airborne dust. And right before I paint, after I have everything set up and staged, is to wipe every surface of it down with a good tack cloth. That gets rid of any bit of microscopic dust and dirt that could be on the surface. Once it's completely wiped down and clean, I'll then get my painter set up and start spraying. I realized I had not put my mask on and went to grab my mask and I finished spraying that first coat. After I sprayed the first coat, I then let that dry to be able to handle and then I flipped both frames over so that I could then spray the inside and do a second coat on the outside. So there's, there's one major downside to using two different types of lumber for the same project. This is gonna be a paint grade project and this is poplar. And you can see up close, this is only a primer, but if it would focus, you can see how smooth of a finish you can get with just primer. The downside to using oak is the grain. 
no matter how much paint you put on it, the grain will always show. Now that wouldn't be an issue if the entire project was made out of oak. But since I only had um, dimensional lumber big enough for the posts out of oak, I'm using oak. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing some of this. I use it quite frequently, Minwax um, wood filler. And I thin it out with a little bit of water so it's a little bit runnier. And I just use a putty knife and I like to do it after I apply the primer because it's a little easier to see to make sure you got all the spots. So here's one that I just did. I'm just lightly coating the entire surface and it's closing all those pores in the grain so that it'll get the same even smooth finish as the poplar would. After I did the final prep for the legs, I then sprayed everything with two layers of my finish paint and then a sealer coat. And after that was all done, I then reassembled everything. And now you can see I have all the interior slats, which are gonna be removable. They are just made out of one by six pine. They are screwed and spaced onto that inside board. You can see here all the slats are pre-drilled on the ends just for one single screw to hold them in place. And as far as spacing goes, um, it's kind of trial and error. You don't want them to be too far apart, but you also don't need a ton of them adding you know, extra weight to the frame that you don't need. Uh, you just want it to be able to be close enough together to support the mattress without having the need for a box spring as a support structure. And in the corners, you can see I have additional pocket screws as well as regular um, cabinet screws holding those feet on, which are also removable. This is about the simplest frame you can make, but simple doesn't mean it's easy to build because if this was any bigger than a twin bed, it would be very difficult to make this outside frame as one piece and be able to easily fit it into a building with a narrow staircase or something likewise. So if you can fit it, or if I can fit it in a building, I'll make it in one piece to give it this nice clean look. And then the only thing that's removable are the legs and the slats to make it both lighter and easier to maneuver. So this, this has two coats of primer, two coats of finish, and one coat of a poly on top of the latex paint to seal it. Thanks for watching the video guys. Uh, I hope you liked it and uh, if you want to stay tuned for more videos from me, please uh, like and subscribe. Thanks.